Ferguson feels like a turning point. For so many, Brown's death was the last straw. Black youth are fed up with being branded criminals at birth. My name is Daryl Pinckney. I went to Ferguson, Missouri, and this is my report. Few in the chanting, placard-carrying crowd across from the police department on South Florissant Road in Ferguson that evening of November 24th expected the grand jury to hand down an indictment. Many expressed the feeling that whereas a grand jury usually takes from five to 10 days in its deliberations, this one used up three months so that everyone could say they'd been thorough before arriving at the decision that they had been going to make in the first place to protect the police. The protests weren't stopping. They weren't going away. I just decided to go on my own because I couldn't really see Ferguson in the news reports. I couldn't get any idea of what it looked like or where it was. And you had the feeling that something was happening. Something was coming together. I suppose I wanted to be there to cut out the mediator for once and be there myself. At one point I was standing on the um, church steps and I could hear the breaking glass and the gunfire and all these people running. It was terrifying because you don't know what can happen. The danger was always from the police as far as I was concerned. I was always looking at that line of policemen, wondering what can happen. You can't be a black guy in the United States and not grow up with this thing on your mind. I was afraid of what the police helicopters with searchlights might mistake us for. And then I was wary of two black youths who seemed to be loping in our direction. They weren't loping. They were making their way along the sides of the parking lot, looking for shelter from the smoke and buzzing overhead. I had to ask myself, when did I become afraid of black youth? How had I, a black man, internalized white fear? But I think uh, the combination of getting older and feeling probably that I look a certain way makes me feel uh, not, not immediately at ease with black youth on the street. Uh, it's a terrible thing to say, uh, but th I suppose that's what I meant, you know, that you feel yourself not them. And that's wrong, because my father always stressed, the police will show you in a second that you are one of them. On the night of the grand jury's announcement, I'd been watching Michael Brown's poor mother on the car, and suddenly we heard, it's unmistakable, even if you've never heard it before, gunfire. And Reverend Seku said, move. And he moved us down the street to a church where we could take sanctuary. And they did let us in. We were instructed to remain in the sanctuary, turn off all the lights, get away from the door, all of that. And so I was surprised when I realized what people were standing around watching, that it was only a few streets away. These were these live streamers still out there. Um, at great risk to themselves. I was seeing at that moment how important it was because the mainstream media had already withdrawn. Uh, the only people left showing what was happening were these citizens journalists. The digital age you know, really kind of hints toward the direct democracy that um, our founding fathers were rather frightened of. In the days since, people have been blocking highways, shutting down shopping malls, lying in the streets, and walking out of classrooms all over the world. Hands up, don't shoot. The Missouri National Guard stood behind the line of Ferguson police at the station on Florissant the next night, and the night after that, the temperature dropping and the crowd thinning, but nonviolent direct action has won out as the defining tactic of the Ferguson movement. I think it was the young people there 
who really took it to heart uh, and made something out of it. Stay here in the jail and we won't be here today! The fact that they didn't leave the streets, that they maintained this vigil every day, created a story out of stories that usually pass away quickly into the next similar incident. And also they really had hit a wall and there was no turning back. America has always felt the necessity of keeping its black male population under control. Behind every failure to make the police accountable in such killings is an almost gloating confidence that the majority of white Americans support the idea that the police are the thin blue line between them and chaos. Indeed, part of the problem in several such cases has been the alarmist phone calls from third parties to police dispatchers reporting any situation involving a black male in a stereotypical and therefore usually false fashion. The police aren't the only ones to engage in racial profiling. If you are a black man, be careful what you shop for in Walmart. This feeling or fear of black men uh, fear of the retribution has been going on, well, since slavery. In Ferguson, two-thirds have uh, warrants out against them or in, involved with the police or the criminal justice system in one way or the other. So, you know, this has been a part of the American response to black people in the country, to black males in particular. Uh, it's been to police them, to be afraid of them. Um, and everything, the way we're organized, only supports this fear, starting with racial segregation, uh, residential segregation. Um, just as with Selma and the early civil rights movement, images of the violence against black people do stir or disturb America's conscience, uh, as they should. The problem is that this kind of policing has been a failure. The only thing it's accomplished has been the deaths of lots of black men who needn't have died. Everybody knows what racism is. The problems needn't be explained over and over. They can't be deflected by saying that Michael Brown took some cigars from a store, that he broke the law and therefore it was proper to kill him with six bullets, although he had no weapon. This is the kind of thinking that racism hides behind. Ferguson feels like a turning point. For so many, Brown's death was the last straw. Black youth are fed up with being branded criminals at birth. Ferguson makes me optimistic in the long run uh, because uh, uh, a certain feeling and uh, dream uh, is still alive in America. Um, it's the essence of American democracy, this push to be included, this push to be fair, this push to make the state answer to uh, individual needs or the needs of the people and not just special interest. I think that Ferguson keeps alive the dream of integration. And if I had anything to say to the young, it would be in America, vote. Think of voting as a radical act and let's take it back. <laughs>